Right. Uh, thank you. So, uh, good morning to everybody on the screen. Uh, on screen, uh, for joining this session. Um, so I'm Daryl. I'm basically from Oracle, and basically I'm going to talk to you a bit about uh, site reliability engineering as well. Um, before I kind of start, I've actually prepared a poll to kind of warm up the audience to find out, um, you know, what kind of industry most of you are kind of coming in from. Um, so if you would, you know, you can go off to that URL, pollev.com slash Daryl Chia 193 and, you know, kind of type in your answers. Um, hopefully we'll get some live feedback uh, coming in while I kind of move on. So, um, I will just start off with a quick introduction. So I'm Daryl. I'm basically the SRE lead. Um, so the, sorry. <clears throat> so I'm working as the SRE lead for uh, Oracle Cloud Services. So my team or my service uh, basically re uh, is the Java management service or which called GMS for short. So um, this is a free OCI service that's uh, available for customers. Um, which allows us to deal with uh, Java usage uh, at scale. So like I said, I'm the SRE lead. So what I do is I kind of take care of um, all the operational aspects of uh, maintaining this service and keeping the service going. So so SRE itself is a pretty big topic. Um, obviously, I won't be able to cover everything uh, that I would like to within this uh, session. But what I'm going to share with you on this particular session is some of the more critical and interesting points that we've kind of drawn from experience uh, working in an SRE team. So some of this information is uh, very common. You can find it through a quick search. Uh, and there's really no surprises that I'm going to bring it up. Uh, but you know what I want to do is kind of put some of these uh, principles or these kind of aspects into a perspective of how teams uh, realistically use it and a bit more on the practical approaches of this. Okay, um, so a bit of background, uh, you know, from this session, uh, basically this is what I really want to cover. I give you a very high level overview of uh, what exactly is SRE, um, what goes into SRE work uh, and, you know, just a short segment of SRE, which is to talk about what exactly we put in, some of the controls that we put in to keep our service going. Right. So on site reliability engineering, right? Um, or as you know, another term that you probably come across is something which is called service reliability engineering. So this kind, this uh, aspect of uh, Engineering kind of started from the 90s where we saw the first uh, SaaS service, which is, you know, our software as a service uh, offering popping up. And, you know, after a few years later, we start seeing a huge um, explosion of media content providers coming up, like, like your, you know, YouTube, Netflix, Spotify, all this just started exploding. And that kind of shifted um, the paradigm of how software actually is being hosted and delivered. So from a very on-prem kind of uh, development model where, you know, development teams kind of work on a product and then, you know, they give it to the infrastructure teams to deploy or, you know, they ship out the, the product. It's kind of shifted into a different uh, phase where actually keeping a service up uh, and selling that service itself uh, has become a bit more dominant. So, of course, this kind of change uh, triggers that uh, the introduction of new roles um, and different priorities on, you know, how a service is actually being sold. And so this is kind of where site reliability engineering draws its background from. So what exactly are we talking about when we kind of uh, say SRE, right? So again, you know, there's a lot of different definitions, a lot of different explanations you can find out there. Uh, this is something that personally I found um, holds quite true. Um, which is actually to use software engineering principles and apply it to infrastructure and operations to create reliable systems. So I probably want to add something there, which is um, scale, right? So we're looking at uh, reliable systems at scale. Um, so what kind of software engineering principles uh, do we want to talk about? You know, because the definition kind of says that. 
Um, we'll cover it a little bit later in the slides, but you know, from a high level perspective, we are talking about things like SLOs, uh, automation, release management, re uh, reduction of toil, right? Okay, um, some a bit more on site reliability engineering, right? So SRE, actually we deal a lot with um, non-functional requirements in uh, development process. So, you know, we deal with things like availability, scalability, elasticity. So it's kind of a bit um, different from, you know, um, regular development work. And one of the key takeaways is that you need to understand that SRE practices differ very widely. You will not be able to find an organization that will have an exactly identical plan with, you know, different with their, you know, other industry um, companies. So SRE is a very, very opinionated approach, right? Um, different organizations will have different priorities and there's no single one size fit all kind of um, solution to this. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was that, you know, as you are find, as you're reading a bit more about site reliability engineering as well, you find that um, DevOps is kind of tied quite closely to SRE. So some in some readings you'll probably find and they will kind of tell you that um, DevOps is uh, implementation of SRE concepts uh, since they both kind of, uh, what they do is uh, they want to bridge development and operations together. But um, my opinion, and I think uh, some other people's, people's kind of uh, brought up was that uh, the focus area is different. So to kind of answer that question on, uh, you know, what's the main difference between SRE and DevOps is, uh, you know, SRE, we focus on focusing on, we focus on solving the issues around the operations aspect, while uh, DevOps, a lot of it focuses around the development and release pipelines itself. Okay, um, sorry about this. I'm trying to figure out the pool, okay. Yeah, let me just skip into that. Okay, um, I'd like to talk a bit about, um, you know, SRE, right? So what actually goes into our work? Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's uh, seven key principles. This is a uh, very common information that you can find out there. A quick search will kind of bring up all these. So I'm not really going to drill too much into detail on what exactly these uh, principles are, but um, I just want to, put this into the slide to kind of bring up the fact that, you know, from SRE perspective, we have these self guidelines uh, that's available and some of them are actually um, interrelated, right? For example, like we, we talk about eliminating toil, which uh, is quite closely tied to automation itself. So, okay, let me go. So just a bit of a background about my, our SRE team, right? So like I said, I work for Java Management Service. We are probably one out of easily a hundred services that's available on Oracle Cloud. And how we kind of operate right now is um, services kind of take care of their own uh, domain. So how the team has been organized is uh, our SRE team uh, is embedded into the service development itself. So we only work with our development team and our focus is keeping our own service alive. So on top of, you know, just um, SRE work, uh, we also get involved or we also deal with the DevOps and operational issues. <clears throat> so this is um, a bit about how your team structure is going to be made because in SRE itself, there have been organizations where DevOps and SRE actually exist as two different entities. But you know, in our case, uh, we kind of put everything together. So in our service itself, uh, shared infrastructure forms a very, very big part. We have a very, very complex ecosystem. Um, so for example, like, you know, we have uh, services that deal with like logging, that deals with telemetry, we have services that deal with um, build uh, our development pipeline. and what this kind of does is uh, it frees up a lot of the SRE time um, to focus on our uh, reliability efforts in the system itself. So we don't need to, um, you know, spin up our own 
repository servers. We don't need to spin up our own CI systems. So there are dedicated teams that um, run these. And those are our shared, infra uh, shared out infrastructure teams. So the service itself um, and my team itself, um, you know, the Java management service is fairly new on uh, Oracle Cloud. Um, we are probably slightly over a year old. And what that kind of means to us is um, the work that we do is a bit different. We constantly have, uh, we have this huge backlog of features that need to come out. Um, and of course, uh, in terms of SRE practices, we're still on the maturing phase. There's still a lot more uh, SRE work that can be done, but um, you know, it's something that we have to work out over time. That's kind of like a perspective of what exactly the team position is right now. Um, in our routine work, um, we function a lot like a DevOps team. So, you know, we have to deal with our routine tasks like, you know, patching, we have to deal with change and release management. We have to deal with incident tickets, uh, both from internal and external. So just to elaborate a, li a little bit about this um, is that um, a lot of these tasks um, are automated, but automation doesn't necessarily mean to us that, you know, these kind of functions uh, will just trigger off when the time comes. So there are certain parts of it, like, you know, uh, patching, right? Um, obviously you wouldn't want your production system to suddenly start patching itself uh, without any approvals or such. So a lot of our SRE work is kind of revolving around this, where we actually have to sit down and physically execute the change, but we have a backend automation that actually deals with how these patches are being delivered into our production systems. And of course, our change release management, uh, we also have to deal with um, development, right? So what we have is um, as part of our development cycle, we run two week sprints. And at the end of it, we actually have deliverables that we need to deploy. So some of these deliverables sometimes are bug fixes, minor patching, um, some work done to kind of deal with uh, customer incidents. And regardless, uh, these changes will still need to be rolled into uh, production. So we do have a defined process on how this is actually done. Um, there's always uh, different levels of approval. There's a uh, testing that's involved, but on the SRE end, what we do is we own the release process, which means that we'll be the ones who actually, you know, get all the component owners to sign off. This is your change log. This needs to go into uh, production. These are the versions to deploy. And once that section of release management is done, um, the SRE team also deals with rolling all these changes into production itself. So in general, the, our service is deployed to somewhat about 30 plus or 40 different regions or sites in both commercial and non-commercial regions. And um, again, deploying to this kind of um, scale is uh, not a trivial task. So easily sometimes uh, just to push out deployments out takes um, three or four days in order to complete. Okay, um, you know, other than these kind of routine tasks, um, Oh, uh, we also deal with um, feature development so and supporting of new features. So from an SRE perspective, uh, we don't actually go in and you know work on the actual components, but we deal with uh, some of the aspects that need to be built into the component. Um, it could also come in in the form of you know utility classes, library classes that uh, we need our components to actually implement. Um, we also deal with automation. So this is uh, part of in line with uh, one of the seven principles, which uh, deal with uh, reducing toil and automation. Um, and of course we deal with um, infrastructure updates. So uh, previously I've talked a lot about um, the software aspect of SRE, but again, um, you know, SRE teams, we deal with DevOps and infrastructure as well. So we have to do maintenance on um, our existing backend infrastructure, things like uh, whether we want to do, whether there's a need to do scaling, as well as uh, when, you know, new regions or sites roll out, um, we need to push our service into uh, production so that this becomes available to customers out there. Okay, so let's talk a bit about um, the qualities of our SRE team, right? So it's interesting uh, because SRE is a multidisciplinary team. So when we actually start creating these teams, uh, we actually require a large skill 
a very, very wide range of skill sets. So, um, you know, things like development skills, coding skills, um, we also have um, requirements for operations and infrastructure. Um, we also need people who kind of understand security. You know, we need people who have been doing support work before. They, they're able to do incident management. So there's really a large uh, spectrum of skill sets that uh, we need. And from my perspective as well is generally when we start looking for SRE, or we need people who have this ability to see a very, very big picture of uh, how your service actually needs to be. So in development itself, um, they kind of have a slightly narrower vision because they're focused a lot on uh, functional requirements. But uh, from an SRE perspective, we need to take a look at the component and we need to consider the ecosystems around it. So, you know, I put a small little diagram there to kind of give you a high level of understanding of what else needs to go into a service, right? So we need to deal with things like compliance, with security. Um, we need to deal with things like um, availability, observability. So these kind of um, fall into the bucket of SRE as well. Um, Again, we not necessarily need to go and implement these uh, things into a component that would still likely fall within the role of a developer itself. But from an SRE perspective, we need to be in the position where we can influence these kind of des uh, design decisions uh, and we can you know, go off and feed requirements into components to say, hey, you need to implement this particular um, utility. Okay. Okay, um, what enables us? So a lot of SRE work is actually uh, interconnected. So what I'm going to kind of focus a bit more on is really what we need to keep the service running. Um, and again, keeping, up a, keeping a service running 24 by 7, uh, there's really many, many layers of complexity involved. Uh, so I were to kind of summarize it back down to two key things, right? So this is what I'm kind of going to focus it to. Uh, there's two key areas. One, of course, is uh, in running a site or a service. Number one, we want to make sure it doesn't fail. And this kind of brings up a requirement for availability and redundancy. And of course, the second part of it is, you know, when it fails, uh, we want to know why and when. And of course, we want to know um, as soon as possible on how to mitigate this problem. Of course, apart from all these, uh, there's really a lot of other things that we need in our infrastructure to kind of support a reliable site. But, um, you know, this is a good place to start. And I don't think that within this uh, session, we'll be able to kind of touch on everything. So I kind of picked out these two to talk about. Um, so availability, right? Um, this kind of falls a bit into the infrastructure operations end of things. Uh, but Minimally, what we do need to look at or consider is a high availability, high availability setup. Um, from H HA, we kind of introduce um, different things like redundancy. And of course, uh, we also kind of have that capability for scaling and uh, <coughs> elasticity. And of course, we also enable workload distribution. So by just introducing avail uh, HA itself, it uh, changes the whole dimension of uh, how we want to keep a uh, site safe and reliable, right? Um, of course, with um, HA itself, you kind of introduce, uh, you kind of bring in um, other non-functional requirements, things like uh, resiliency, you know, how resilient is your service, you know, how good is it that, um, you know, if something goes down, it doesn't completely fail. And of course, we introduce redundancy. Um, the other kind of, uh, so the other aspect of uh, availability uh, that we kind of bring in by introducing a HA setup is, um, you know, it opens up a lot of options for um, introducing things like rolling updates um, when we want to do deployments and patching. And of course, um, it also gives us the capability to do scaling with no downtime. So what I've kind of shown in this diagram is kind of a very high level HA diagram. Um, most of um, services that I'm aware of kind of use this same kind of um, setup within OCI. 
where we kind of request come through a gateway and then it's kind of put, put through to a load balancer, uh, to a set of computes that is actually being uh, serving out the components. Okay, the other aspect that we want to talk about is uh, really about observability. So where this kind of comes from is, you know, from observability, from an observability and instrumentation perspective, uh, we want to know that when something happens, um, we want to know what the current state of the service is and instrumentation is a key part of it. So when we talk about um, instrumentation, there's generally um, three key pillars that we talk about. So which is uh, telemetry, uh, which is the collection of matrix from your system. And we talk about logging. And we, um, the one that's not in this diagram right now is about tracing. So from us, uh, we kind of build up a whole ecosystem. So where the component is going to start emitting logs and telemetry into a shared ecosystem. So we're talking about um, log servers rather than, you know, going out to log files, right? So we, from a logging server, we like, um, you know, for example, Elasticsearch or ELK, your ELK stacks, right? So from these, uh, it kind of gives us the capability to search your logs. Um, it gives us uh, something which is time-based, so you can kind of filter out based on um, a particular time which an incident happens. And from logging itself, we are also able to derive uh, telemetry or matrix data. So telemetry, uh, telemetry and matrix data for at the minimum, right? So we are talking about things like emitting heartbeat um, to a telemetry server. And uh, what we do is we kind of design uh, alarms around it. So when some kind of uh, drop, some kind of uh, incident happens, uh, we get alerted from an alarm. So this could, you know, trigger off Slack messages. It could trigger off um, pages or handphone SMS, you know, physical calls. So that's part of what needs to go into um, keeping our service 24-7. And observability is something that needs to be built into the software end of things as well. So mm -hmm. the takeaway from here is um, while some products do uh, have some form of telemetry uh, of some uh, matrices, matrices being emitted, um, we need to consider how much of it is sufficient for us to actually have this kind of setup. So which uh, kind of builds, comes back to um, SLOs and SLIs, right? Uh, which is our service level objectives and indicators. Okay. Um, so a bit about uh, quantifying reliability, right? So how do we know uh, how reliable are you? And, you know, how do we actually tie or measure um, the performance of an SRE team? So a lot of it is deals with site availability. It deals with, um, you know, SLAs, SLOs, SLIs. So these are indicators or measurements that we uh, put into the system to kind of uh, measure um, uh, how close we are to meeting a, a certain objectives. So for... Our team, which is Java Management, uh, we are a free service. So what that kind of means is to, in OCI world, is uh, free services don't actually have an SLA. Um, but we need to take into consideration that SLA uh, happens on a business process level. Um, it is something that's very business driven. And free services uh, like us, we don't actually define the SLA. So we have no... Um, from a business perspective, we do not guarantee a certain level of availability. But internally, what we do have is uh, SLOs, which is our service level objectives. So these are quite similar to uh, SLAs, except that the consumption of these, um, matrix, the, these numbers are a bit different. So um, SLOs is more of an internal measure. Uh, it's, you know saying that, you know, while we don't want to promise customers anything, uh, we have a minimum certain, minimum level of um, availability we want to be held accountable for, uh, which is, uh, in our case, it's 99.5. Um, so 99.5, uh, it's not in the chart there, but, uh, you know, it gives us, you know, downtime, monthly downtime of 21 minutes buffer or, you know, 1.8 1, 1 days of uh, every year. 
Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, how we actually define our SLOs and SLAs. So from a service perspective, um, you know, we run a front-end UI. Uh, we have back-end services, you know, it's REST, it's REST-based. Uh, and what we do is we actually define matrices for each and individual service. So we have like, you know, our CRUDL, uh, create, read, update, delete, listing services. And on each service, we extract matrices, right? So we want to know things like error rate when, you know, a request comes in, uh, how much of these requests, uh, we get back, uh, 200 HTTP 200, how much you get like HTTP 400, 500. So, um, we measure each service, but, uh, generally we only measure the commonly used services, which is, you know, your CRUD. Um, of course we measure things like latency. We measure things like, um, in the backend process where there's no rest services, how long it actually takes for, uh, the, uh, request to be completed. So again, this, uh, ties a lot back to what I've mentioned earlier on, uh, observability where, um, you know, we need to have those kind of, um, mechanisms in a component to emit this, emit this kind of, uh, matrices. So for us, you know, every REST service, we have our SLOs, we have our SLIs, and we also have an overall compounded one. So we basically take all of these uh, matrices, uh, we do an average, and that gives us a availability number. So let's say uh, this is REST. So what about UI? So interestingly, uh, because of the ecosystem that we kind of exist in, um, when we do deployments, UI is actually deployed into a service itself. So those SLOs, that SLIs kind of uh, belong to the UI team. And from a reliability perspective, um, what we do is we actually monitor them rather than, you know, to be able to act or, you know, to rectify errors in that aspect of it. Okay. Um, the last part is, you know, talking about matrices, right? So again, a lot of SRE work is talking about, you know, telemetry, about matrix. We need to, um, collect all this information from our components and what we do with information is important because, you know, other short, other than, you know, just collecting matrices, um, there are also other aspects, uh, other than just for SLI, SLO purposes, right? So we want to have that kind of capability to say that yeah, you know, for some reason, some workflow has stopped in the back end. So those don't, uh, some of these, uh, don't directly affect, um, uh, these SLI SLO numbers, but you know, from a overall reliability perspective, we want to know when these incidents happen and we want to go in and find out. So, um, the thing is that, you know, um, we want to build uh, from a reliability perspective, right? You know, we, these matrices kind of form, um, we need to look beyond what uh, we're just collecting or what is the information that comes beyond um, just collecting these matrices. So for example, things like, you know, CPU utilization is a very common uh, matrix, but you know, what do those spikes in CPU utilization mean? Does it mean that, um, you know, we need to scale? Does it mean that there's something wrong in the code? There's some memory leak somewhere. So that's part of the work that, uh, SRE needs to do as well. And, um, you know, as I, from to circle back, right. You know, um, this kind of emphasize on a lot on observability qualities of a component itself. Um, Okay, I'm kind of close to the end of my slides. Um, just wanna, sorry, let me check everything. Okay, so uh, I just wanna draw a short conclusion. I didn't really want to spend too much time on um, the entire science of SRE. So there's really many, many aspects and concepts that we do not cover in this uh, section. So I'm just gonna kind of bring up some points like, you know, error budgets, toiling, automation, but um, these are also aspects that, you know, from SRE, we need to work on. Uh, but what I want to get into is, you know, hopefully from here, you get a glimpse into, you know, what SRE work is mostly focused around. 
and um, you know, I have some insights to you know what SRE work is like. Um, okay, um, that's kind of what I have right now. I think the poll didn't load again. Okay, um, that's all I have for today. Do we want to take any questions? Anybody? All right. Um, if you have no questions, um, I'd like to end the session here. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, hopefully you've kind of uh, got an understanding of, um, at least a high level understanding of the work that we do. All right. Thank you.